Let's see if I can do this. Good. The mechanism gave way on the first try, but the car is trashed. For my sake, I hope that guy outside never finds out about this. The label says single malt scotch whiskey, and the seal on the cap is still intact. A clean iron pillowcase. Nothing like the grimy sheets on the bed I've been lying in all this time. At first glance, I'd say those old loafers are too big for me. But Rod offered me any clothes I might need. And I don't see anything else around here. Hmm. Not just yet. I'm grateful to Rod for his hospitality. But these old shoes don't look very clean. It won't take more than a few hours for the wound on my foot to turn really ugly. And the last thing I need now is a serious infection. White, folded, with a scent of fabric softener. It's sad, but this pillowcase is the nicest thing I've seen since I woke up. A high-proof whiskey, and by the looks of it, an expensive one. The bottle was hidden in Rod's closet. I suppose that despite his apparent strength, that man needs to escape his problems from time to time. Okay, let's see how well this protruding bed spring can cut. By slashing the pillowcase, I've been able to make some strips of white fabric. These bandages don't smell bad, and they're as clean as can be expected in a place like this. I use a little of what's in the bottle to soak the bandages. Here goes. I'll use the bandages on my foot. I hope the alcohol is enough to keep it from getting infected. Let's pray this improvised remedy doesn't lead to a delightful case of gangrene. What bastard put a lid on the drum? You tried to <laughs> suffocate me, you bunch of assholes! I think that guy out there just discovered the reason for his sudden coughing fit. Some coward in this shithole wanted to suffocate me! Me! Who was it? Who was it? Come back here so I can give you back your lid, you son of a bitch! Did you hear that noise, Rod? What's going on out there? I don't know. I'll go have a look. I think it's that poor drunk who's always hanging around the trailer. He's kicking up a fuss again. It's a good thing poor Colin can't hear his insults. Don't ever say anything like that again, Rod. I'm sorry, honey. I wasn't thinking. What are you doing here? Get out of here! You've no business being in this room! Rod, I I'm sorry. I... <coughs> but what's going on? Get out of here, Michael! You didn't see anything, understood? Out! Out! Excuse my outburst, Michael. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have behaved that way. It's not like me. But this new world brings out the worst in all of us. It's just that I can't stand to see Colin suffer this way. So for your own good, please, stay away from this room. Away? Why? It's no use trying to hide it. You're bound to find out sooner or later. Colin is very sick. And the authorities claim his illness is highly contagious. Highly contagious? Is he one of the dissolved? Michael! I won't let anyone use that word in my house! Yes, Colin caught that damn disease. And what exactly does the disease consist of? I don't know, Michael. No one really does. The only news is what the army brings us. They say the disease is highly contagious. And it's our duty to turn over all victims to the cleanup brigades. But no one has ever come back after being carried off in one of those ambulances. No one. So we can't let them take Colin, do you understand? Yes, of course I understand. 
They say that all the victims are condemned, that there's no salvation for anyone, that at the end of their suffering and their trances lies certain death. I think that even the army is afraid of the victims. Really strange things happen around them, Michael. Things you wouldn't believe. What things happen around people infected with the disease? Strange things with no possible explanation. In their trances, they... They go places, Michael. They bring back information. They know things. They talk to people who are no longer with us. And we've been living like this for weeks. The things that are happening around Colin are getting more and more confusing and hard to bear. Talking to the dead? Jesus. This man's nerves are shot from the exhaustion and stress. But how did Colin get infected? We don't know. No one knows how the disease is spread. The only thing we know is that the disease appeared after the catastrophe and that it's spreading like wildfire. So the great wave brought the dissolved with it? Yes, but don't use that word again. Not in this house, anyway. It's so cruel and disrespectful. In effect, that's the only thing we know for sure about all this insanity. The great wave took everything from us and left us with this epidemic. What's happening to Colin is terrible. If only there was something I could do. Well, Michael, you can help us. I'm convinced that our finding you was no coincidence. You've got to help us. But you said yourself that all the victims are condemned. What can I do? No, all is not lost. In the camp, there are rumors of a cure. It seems that in the city, on the other side of the fence, the victims have access to a drug. But we can't get it here. And my contacts out there, well, let's just say they can't do anything to help. So there's a drug that can cure them? Yes, but they say that producing it takes a long time and is very expensive. And so it's reserved for city dwellers who can afford to pay for it. Get us that drug, Michael. I beg of you, please. Colin's time is running out. Getting involved looks dangerous. I saw that shooting out there. There's also the possibility of infection. Infection? Are you afraid for your life, Michael? Without our help, you'd be dead right now. Dead. Don't forget that. What's more, I could help you in return. I could help you get back what you lost, don't you see? Give me back what I lost? But you hardly know me, Rod. I know the essential part, Michael. I know that you're a blankhead. Blankhead? What the devil does that mean? A blankhead is a person with no memories, who can't remember anything. It seems that the Great Wave had an enormous neurological impact on certain people, Michael. You're not the only one. Or even the worst case. There are people who even forgot how to talk and how to walk after the explosion. Some ended up dying of starvation. They forgot what food looked like, how to chew it, even that eating was a necessity. You can consider yourself lucky. You still remember how to keep yourself alive. And that's the important thing. The natural recovery process is slow. It can take months, if at all. Listen to me, Michael. A man without memories is just a shadow. Or even worse, he's nobody. I still have some contacts out there. I was an important man in the municipal government. I could trace your name, your data in public records, your fingerprints. I could restore your whole life in the blink of an eye. But please, help us. I'm grateful for your help, Rod, and for everything you people have done for me. But listen to me, Michael. We know that it's possible that our son is condemned to die. In fact, my wife and I have everything prepared for when he leaves us. Our child is the only thing that keeps us holding on in the new world. Nothing would have any meaning for us without him. So if there is even the slightest chance of saving him, we are prepared to do whatever it takes. Please, Michael, help us. Uh, mm. For God's sake, listen to him. He's just a child. Rod, come in here, quickly! Bring us that cure, and we'll help you get your life back. Colin is our only hope in this new world. Help us save our future, and I'll give you back your past. I promise you. 
Goodbye, Michael. No, Rod, wait. Bring a drug? Is he out of his mind? That man wants me to put his son's life in my hands? I can barely remember who I am. When I probably wouldn't last more than a few hours out there. But Rod was right. A man without a past is nothing more than his shadow. He offered to help me get my life back. My memories. So if I want answers, I have only one possible course of action. To get that drug. Wait a minute. Before leaving, I should write down everything important I find out in this notebook. It might come in handy if, as Rod says, I'm one of the blank heads the Great Wave left in its wake. What's going on? It's amazing. Everything's changing again. Everything. Everything is mutating, and I haven't even moved. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. that sensation again it's like floating in a dense liquid while everything around me is transformed good god I think I'm starting to lose my mind a quick glance at these tents is enough to make you realize how forsaken these poor people are confined against their will inside the camp although it looks hastily and shoddily built it's surprising to see a brick-and-mortar building amid all these shacks in the refugee camp. No doubt this must belong to someone important, or with very good contacts in here. It's the enormous fence around the perimeter of the camp, with surveillance from the towers and on the ground. This barbed wire fence intensifies the feeling of claustrophobia in here, making it even more suffocating. machinery, steel, cement, even the skeleton of an old construction crane. This place is a veritable cemetery of the industrial age. A thick wall of scrap metal, debris and rusty metal surrounds this place on all four sides. It's a good 20 feet high. I can't believe it manages to stay up. An enormous rusty tank designed to collect rainwater. Everything indicates that the great wave wiped out the concept of running water in one fell swoop, at least on this side of the fence. This noisy electric generator seems very old and decrepit, but it works. Hey, keep your hands away from that thing, pal, if you want him to stay attached to you. Okay, I just wanted to see it up close. There's no reason to get nervous. The wreck of an old ice cream truck. I don't reckon it's going anywhere without its wheels. It looks like the enormous skeleton of a beached whale. She's a very young woman, practically a girl. She's playing by herself with some junk she found among the scrap metal and trash. Two guys entertaining themselves by playing poker. I suppose time passes very slowly in here. Even though there are only a few coins on the table, the game seems very intense. I'm afraid neither of them likes losing a hand. A few lousy coins. They don't look like they're worth much. Just a few loose pennies. What exactly do you think you're doing? Just try putting those grubby little fingers on those coins, and we'll chop them off and use them for poker chips. Hey, will you quit bothering us already? Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Excuse me? What did you call me? You're Mr. Sleepyhead. I saw you sleeping in Colin's trailer. I'm so glad you're awake now. 
I wasn't asleep. I was sick for a long time in that trailer. No, you weren't sick. You were sleeping. Like a big brown bear, Sir Sleepyhead. Sometimes I used to watch you sleeping in Rod's house, and you would grunt in your sleep like a bear. A great big lazy bear, Mr. Sleepyhead. But I'm glad you're awake now. I like your voice. You sound like a knight in a fairy tale. Mr. Sleepyhead? No, that's not my name. I'm Michael. No, you're just trying to fool me. You're Mr. Sleepyhead. My name is Rose. There's something odd about this girl's behavior. It's true that she's very young, but she talks like a little girl. Nice to meet you, Rose. So, do you know Rod and Colin too? Of course. I go over to their house a lot. Well, when they let me out of the van, that is. Rod and his wife have been very nice to me. Sometimes they let me play with Colin. We're very good friends. Are you a friend of Rod's and Colin's too, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, I'm friends with them too. Do you want me to tell you a secret, Mr. Sleepyhead? Of course. I have your old clothes. The ones you were wearing when Rod and his wife found you. I have them in the van. They were going to throw them away, but they gave them to me to wrap my baby in. He'll be cold now that winter's coming. Your baby? You have a baby, Rose? Yes, I have a baby, but he's not with me right now. He got lost. Have you seen him? Do you know where he is? I have another secret to tell you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Back in the van, Rose, now. Move your ass. Get in there. Another secret? Just a minute. Wait. Get in that van, Rose. It's a very important secret, Mr. Sleepyhead. Something about you. Something about before the great wave. But first I have to find my baby. Have you seen him? Come on, Rose, you heard me. You don't want to get us mad now, do you? I have to go. Goodbye, Mr. Sleepyhead. Poor girl. She's obviously mentally ill. She's just a little girl in a grown-up's body. And you? If you want to go in there with her, you gotta pay like everybody else. Hey, where do you think you're going, pal? Let me into the van. I just want to talk to Rose for a few minutes. Of course, it's none of our business what you want to do with her. But if you go into the van, you gotta pay the price. Listen, you got any money on you? No, I don't have any on me. Then come back when you do and quit bothering us. We have a very busy schedule, you know? The girl said something about a secret involving me. Something from before the Great Wave. It seemed important. But what is it? Maybe it was a product of her madness. But I need to talk to her inside that van to get some answers. I'll come back with the money. Now that sounds much better. I see that we're starting to speak the same language. Hey, you guys. Hello again, pal. Have you come back to spend some time with Rose, or do you just enjoy wasting our time? Let me into the van. I just want to talk to Rose for a few minutes. Of course, it's none of our business what you want to do with her. But if you go into the van, you gotta pay the price. Got any money on you? No, I don't have any on me. Then come back when you do and quit bothering us. We have a very busy schedule, you know? The girl said something about a secret involving me. Something from before the Great Wave. It seemed important. But what is it? Maybe it was a product of her madness. But I need to talk to her inside that van to get some answers. I'll come back with the money. Now that sounds much better. I see that we're starting to speak the same language. That poor girl's not right in the head. She acts like a little girl. How can you people be so unscrupulous? Rose is an adult. She's earning a living. Like we're all trying to in this camp. Mind your own business, pal. You're abusing a poor, disturbed girl. Us? 
taking advantage of Rose? Us? You want to insult us? We're giving her room and board. She's got nothing to complain about. But she's got to work. That's the only thing we ask of her in return. That's the way things work now. Bring us the money, then you can get in the van with her. Hey, do us a favor and spare us all that sanctimonious crap from the old world, pal. Don't waste our time. Is that an electric generator? I've seen very few of these around here. Yeah, in this hellhole, you can count them on the fingers of one hand. Nowadays, you can't buy generators like this anywhere. And with the power grid all blown to hell, you can bet that one of these is worth more than your life. We use it to light Rose's room. We like to protect our, uh, investments. So don't get too close to it. These things are very fragile. And they have a bad habit of getting lost. Now, we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? Dozens of stored drums stack chaotically. What the devil could be in them? And who might want to keep them here? Another brick and mortar building. That's the second one I've seen inside the camp. These structures stand out like mansions in the misery that dominates this place. Its owner must be someone important. It's a thick cable that runs along that building's roof, but I can't see it very well from here. It's too high. Someone placed a bunch of those rusty drums up against the wall. Ugh. They smell like liquor and industrial oil. Oh, Jesus. The cocktail of odors is nauseating. Okay. Here goes. It's impossible to budge these drums at all. I don't know what they contain, but whatever it is, it weighs a ton. Another camp inhabitant. He seems quite elderly. What's he doing here all by himself? This bright light leaves no doubt about where the entrance to the building is. There are some insects fluttering around it that end up getting scorched by the heat and dropping dead. Hello. Hello, son. Would you like to get a little closer to the fire? Thanks, mister. This is a rather isolated part of the camp. What are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting. That's all. Just waiting. You're waiting? And what is it you're waiting for exactly? Nothing in particular. The usual. For the fire to go out. For sunrise. For it to get cold again. I'm waiting for something to change. Or for everything to stay as it is. I'm just waiting. You're too young to understand. It's starting to get cold. Where's your tent? Or your trailer? Yes, I had a tent once. They issued me one when I decided to enter the refugee camp after the Great Wave. The trailer was out of the question. They went to the families with the best contacts. Ah, you know how it is. Even in purgatory, some people are more equal than others. You say that you decided to enter the camp. Does that mean that people weren't forced to come here? No, oh, no. Of course not. Why would they have to force us? The catastrophe hit the city hard. Those of us who had lost our homes were invited to come here. In principle, it was temporary just until the authorities got the situation under control and started rebuilding. We used to have food, water, and a place to sleep. But now it's more like a prison camp than a refugee center. What happened? I don't really know. I guess something went wrong. The new house and the promises never got built. And in the end, the army seized control of the camp. The food ran out. And then the water supply. Nobody bothered to replace them. Seems like our lives didn't matter anymore. I see. In time, 
things in here started to get very ugly. There were riots, uprisings, and the army decided to close the gates of the camp without any notice. One day they decided that no one could enter or leave here. Well, actually, people still could uh, enter, that is. Now, this is where anyone who gets in the way in the city ends up. Or anyone they don't know what to do with. So, this has turned into something like a concentration camp. That's right, son. That's exactly what it is. You know, it's funny. I remember when my father told us about the war in Europe. About all the persecution, deportations those overcrowded cattle cars. That all sounded to us like an old movie, an old horror movie. And look at us now. I guess some things never change. They just stop being visible for long enough for us to forget about them. And where's your tent now? Uh, it was stolen from me a while back. They fetch a good price on the black market now. Stolen? But how could anyone... <laughs> you seem to be new in the camp, am I right? These things happen nowadays. It's best to take things as they come. The reality of the new world is very simple, son. The soldiers and the moles do whatever they like on this side of the fence. And the hunter and his men run the black market and all the dirty rackets. I suggest you memorize all this. The hunter. I've exchanged a few words with him, but I hardly know him. Yes. The man who protected me during all the shooting. He seems like someone with good connections and some answers. Could he know anything about the drug for treating the dissolved? Do you know where I can find him? You can find him in those barracks at the back. That's his... Well, it says his logistics office. Now, the hunter is very dangerous. Watch your step around him and his men. I happened to meet his father when he was young. Ah, oh, he was a violent, degenerate son of a bitch. A real asshole. And I'm afraid his son has followed in his footsteps. Let's talk about something else. So tell me, is there any way to get out of the camp? Oh, I'm sorry, son. The only way to get out of this camp is to know someone important who can pull strings for you. Or to become a camp mole. Those traitorous scumbags have gate passes. Hmm. I see. I'm not surprised you want to get out of this shithole. You've no doubt got something to do or someone to find out there. Well, they say things are better in the city. That there's order and that things are starting to function again. But who knows? Well, at least they have Reverend Blake and the consolation of Suicide Park. Suicide Park? What's that? Nah, just a song that drifts into the refugee camp from the other side of the fence now and then. And the first dark stars come out to hang from the sky. We could sit and count them together. You and I, when the sun departs from Suicide Park. I'm sure you still have some hopes, some dreams. I'm afraid you're just too young to understand it. Who's Reverend Blake? He's a preacher. He sometimes comes from the city to bring us a little comfort. Now, some people make jokes about him, but many of us believe that he's a prophet. You should hear him speak sometime. His words etch themselves deeply into your soul. That's why he has so many followers inside and outside the camp. And what was the extent of the Great Wave's impact? How are things beyond the city? Truth is, I couldn't tell you. In the first days, the chaos was so overwhelming that no one worried about anything beyond their own backyard. We victims were disoriented, cut off from the world. Then I came into the camp, and uh, news from far off places doesn't reach this prison. I'm afraid you'd have to leave here to get the answer to that question. I should be going on my way. Have a pleasant wait, mister.